Late, late show from Malaysia. Rommel right at the end has meant that it's finished 3-3 here between Korea and Malaysia. Incredible. Quite yeah. incredible. Crazy game of football. I mean, for the first opening 70 minutes it was a terrible game of football to be honest first half Korea weren't really at the races had a couple of chances dominated possession uh, the ball was played majority in Malaysia's half but they just couldn't seem to break them down could they they got that goal from the corner great delivery from Kangin Lee and the ball was well over the bar I don't know why they had to go and check that and and everything that uh, went in in that story but where is goal line technology i just don't understand it like it was miles over and it took so long to come to a decision that was very frustrating and at half time you're kind of thinking all right one nil up but I haven't really played well and then second half it just all kicked off didn't it it was unbelievable um obviously um huang uh huang and bomb gives the ball away right on the edge of his own penalty box um and it was kind of crazy because uh, Malaysia uh, looked look like they were trying their best to miss the chance and looked like South Korea were trying their best to give them the goal and uh, they take a few extra touches it looks like the chance has gone but then Faisal just about is able to uh, squeeze the ball in with a 360 turn brilliant finish and then they get a penalty a few minutes later VAR getting involved controversial decision I'm not sure if it definitely was a penalty but there was definitely contact between CL and Arif the um, Malaysian uh, uh, winger and the referee a lot of questionable goes over decisions to the screen. Today, weren't Definitely, they? I thought the referee was very questionable. But referee goes over to the screen, decides to give a penalty, and all of a sudden Malaysia are two one up. You're thinking, how the hell are Korea in this position? You're losing to one of the worst teams of the tournament, Malaysia, two goals to one. Um, absolutely horrific. Uh, they, and and again, it's a pattern with Korea. Take the lead, well, they've done every game, and then allow the opposition back in the game and uh, allow them to grow in confidence. And Malaysia took the lead, and then all of a sudden it was kind of backs against the wall for Malaysia. It was a case of could they would they hold on running down the clock? Lee Kang in bags of unbelievable free kick with five minutes to go. Yeah, I think it was even given an own goal now. Might be given an own goal, but it was a great free kick either way. Um, the the hits the crossbar and a touch to keep on its way in. Um, just when they needed him most, you know, brilliant free kick from uh, Lee Kang in, um, uh, and it looked like it done enough to say to get a draw in the 94th minute of stoppage time. Um, they another dodgy decision from the referee. A Korea striker gets in ahead of the Malaysia defenders. I don't know how much contact there is on the on the striker, but the referee deems there to be enough contact think, again from VAR to give a penalty. I think there was contact, not by the guy who won the ball, but the other guy who came steaming in. Mm. I mean, he did kind of bundle him down. So, yeah, without getting the ball. Yeah, so I think the penalty was given for that, not for the actual challenge. Mm. Not for the, yeah, because there was two players around him. And then Seung Ho Min, Brilliant finish with the uh, with the penalty into the bottom corner, clinical. And you think, all right, it's been a terrible game, but Korea have done enough to get the three points, and we just take the three points and move on. But there was a late sting in the tail within in the 15th minute of stoppage time. Malaysia do come forward, and Rommel somehow buries a shot on the edge of the box. Keeper gets a big hand to it, and, and look, I think I, I think obviously on the balance of play, Korea should be winning this game, but. I think Malaysia will feel like they deserve a point with how they played. Malaysia didn't come forward too often, but when they did, the defending from Korea was absolutely shocking. It was absolutely shocking. I mean, I don't understand. They didn't have that much to do with the Korean defence today, but everything that they did, they did terribly. I don't know what was going on with them. Kim Min Jae as well, his passing out the back was the, was the pass that led to that goal in the last minute. So... Korean defence need to have a big, long look at themselves because they need to improve massively because if they go into that Saudi Arabia game, if it is Saudi, in the next round and play like that, defending, they're gonna, we're going to go out. Yeah. And that's, that's just the facts of the matter. You look at uh, the, the three teams we've played, in the, the game in the next round is going to go up significantly in levels. Malaysia are, a, are a not a great footballing side. Jordan, not a great footballing side. Bahrain, not a great footballing side. You're about to go and play Saudi Arabia, who qualify for World Cups. Beat so, Argentina. And beat Argentina. So it's uh, Korea need to improve dramatically if they've got any ambitions to win this tournament. 100%. And let's hope they maybe, with, um, as, the, as the tournament progresses, they do up their game. Because if they play against Saudi like they did in the group stages, 
they'll be very lucky to get through that game. Very lucky. Um, and I think at the moment, it looks like um, that game will be played. Uh, Let me see. Oh, we don't know yet. Oh, we don't know if it's definitely Saudi yet. Yeah, the game's later. It but, could be Thailand. But, but you imagine Sa who is Saudi playing? They're playing Thailand. Yeah. So I whoever mean, wins that game. Can't see Thailand beating Saudi, but you never know. You never know. If Thailand do end up winning, we'll be playing Thailand, which would be much better draw. Much better. Much better. Thailand are more of the level of the teams that we've played today, uh, in this group. Yeah. Um, we'll find out. But whatever happens, the game will be played 30th of January, okay. uh, which will be Tuesday. Day before the Brentford game. Yeah. Um, in terms of Hyung Min Son today, he did get a goal, another one from the penalty spot. That's two goals this tournament, both from the penalty spot. Yet to score from open play and yet to look his real self, really. I thought today, um, especially late on in the game, he was kind of just shafted out to the wide, trying to get good balls into the box. Wasn't really happening for him. I just felt you could sense his frustration, couldn't you? Yeah. And again, I, I felt like he became much more alive when he moved to the left to be honest I thought he was a lot more involved out on the wing I thought he was struggling to really um, I thought he did really struggle in the, when he was in the central area to affect the game to get on the ball um, and maybe it's a case of uh, from next from from the next game he has to start on the left because at the moment in this formation he's not doing well up front and he's not getting involved in the game and he's on the periphery He's not on being allowed that space in behind. He's getting restricted. Um, and the only space he can find is out on the left. Um, I did think he ended the game strongly. I did think he was getting more involved. But from a lot of the game, he was, uh, was kind of not involved. He was on the periphery. But the real magic man for Korea this tournament has been Kangin Lee. You know, Korea haven't played well. They haven't been fluid. They haven't been creating chances at will. They've been relying on moments of magic. And those moments of magic in the first game and in this game, have come from Kang In Lee, haven't they? Yeah, and he's been the one where he looks like something's going to happen. He didn't have a great game last game, but remember the first um, game against Bahrain, um, South Korea drawing, and he comes up with an unbelievable goal from the edge of the area and, um, and then seals it late on. And this game, again, South Korea losing. We're looking for a bit of inspiration. He not only wins the free kick, but absolutely bags it in as well with an unbelievable strike. Uh, very central, very far out, and take, it took a special shot from that uh, kind of area to, to score a goal and get the equaliser. And it was unbelievable, unbelievable goal. And um, um, he has been the one who's been providing those bits of quality which have been sorely missing from this career team so far, um, sadly. But Kagan's easily been their best player this tournament. And you know what? In a tournament like this, where you would say the quality is not at the highest level, if you do have players like Kangin and Son who can produce those moments of magic, you've always, you always put yourself in a chance, don't you? Yeah, as long as you're keeping it tight at the back, which we do aren't today. But 100%, you've got those bits of quality where you know if you can restrict the opposition to limited chances or goals that you've got your you've got the quality to come up with something in the front line and that's what Korea have they've got individuals so um look this tournament's still there for them and it's still open but the performance level has to improve if they're going to go if they're going to go and win this tournament and in terms of um Clint, I nearly said Southgate there but in terms of Klinsman um I've said it after every game I'll say it again the tactics are just awful from a, for a team like Korea playing in heavy favourites in three of these games that they've played. They're just not doing enough. Uh, they're not utilising the magic men enough in terms of Hyung Min Son and Kang In Lee. It's kind of just relying on those moments of magic. And yeah, I said before that you can uh, get through games with mo moments of magic, but with the team that Korea have, they shouldn't be just relying on these moments of magic. We should be carving these teams open time and time again, and we're just not doing that. Yeah, especially teams I know that um, obviously Malaysia was a massive game for them. You could see how much it meant to them, but you can see on the pitch their quality is very much lacking, especially defensively. I know that they're going to make it difficult for you, but the quality that South Korea have, they should be making light work of these teams. Obviously, Huang Hee Chan's now back, which is absolutely crucial, and that he's going to be a massive boost to come uh, the next round, round 16. Um, he looked good when he came he on today. He looked look sharp. So maybe with him out wide, keeping Son in the centre... I think maybe you'll get some joy or maybe putting him up front, but at least that's going to add the quality. But Huang Hee Chan off the right, he's uh, not Huang Hee Chan, sorry. Lee Kang In off the right, he's not getting involved enough. I know he's been the one providing the magic, but 
he just seems just on the on the edge of the game all the time when he's on that yeah. right hand side whenever he comes when he gets the ball moved centrally he seems to get a lot more involved in the game and he seems to um, look look effective but when he's stuck out wide he just seems to be out of the game and mm. we need to get him more involved and I don't know if maybe it means change formation maybe a 4-3-3 or a um, 4-2-3-1 but it's 4-4-2 at the moment is not working and I think Klinsman has to change it up yeah, totally agree. So that um, is the reaction. Korea do finish second in the group, which sets up a tie against Saudi Arabia or Thailand. We'll find out a bit later with um, what happens in that game.